I'm here with Allison Mitchell of Sensor City, and you are the executive director. And we've talked to you before, Allison, about all the amazing things that are happening in this connected city. Let's talk now about the technology, because a lot's advanced, and we're seeing a lot of companies really getting excited about it. What's your thoughts right now that's making it a reality? I think all the technology is there, Peggy. Um, and really, it's about people coming up with the ideas and ways of using the technology. So certainly we have the uh, sensors are available, the electronics are there and quite mature. The networks are there, both in terms of low power networks like LoRaWAN networks and 5G networks um, and obviously fiber connections. And of course, now we know how to use data and we know how to represent it well on apps so that people can easily access that data and choose which bits of data they use, turning it from data into information and then into something that really adds value to their business. So we have to kind of put all these things together. Are we having to build it together? This is the kind of thing that we talked about. There can't be all these islands of things. Everything has to kind of come together. Is that what we're starting to discover? Yeah. Yes, very much. And particularly in the city market, what you need is um, cities themselves, you can think of as platforms. They are lots of points of data with sensors all over the place and people carrying mobile phones that are sensor related and cars that are sensor related. They're pretty much everywhere and producing masses and masses of data. And if you've got somebody who really wants to make the most of that, um, that data and to turn it into information and into insight, then they can drive a project forward and really make a massive difference to, to their city, to make it a smart city. Are these sensors really giving real-time information now about things that we didn't know? We talk about roads and bridges and they're crumbling and we're getting information to really, in some cases, save lives so we don't have a bridge that's collapsing and now we can have an, bridges protected or, or worked on before it collapses. Absolutely, Peggy. Um, you can have sensors that measure pretty much anything. So humidity, moisture, um, vibration, and you can be understanding the tolerance levels. We're learning all the time um, where, where there are problems. And those, those sensors are so small now, the housing can be very robust, can work in very difficult environments, and they can be sending that information back. No need to go out and inspect bridges directly. Um, you can have that information be, be sent to you as a company and you can really save on the manpower and um, make sure that you are being alerted to things remotely. How are different public and private partnerships working together on this? Because you have to think about these sensors in these community, as you talk about as a sensor city, everybody's kind of working together and giving information. How, are, how is that really happening now? Because before we were still kind of not making it happen, but now we have to make it happen. I think we do have to have to make it happen. And it is very much, as you say, it's about a public and private partnership. Um, if somebody in a city, a city is a very complex piece, um, a beast rather, and it has lots of stakeholders involved and all of those stakeholders have to come together. So it might be the construction companies, it could be the transport companies, it could be the people who are owning the hospitals who are trying to keep people out of hospital. And of course, it's the individuals who live in the city as well, because they need to know that their data is being protected their security is being protected, and they need to know that they are they are being safely looked after. Are we having to build a lot of things now when we talk about these connected cities? Because we're talking about autonomous vehicles. We're talking about connected traf lights, traffic lights. We're talking about distribution. Are there a lot of things that happen? I mean, are we talking about things that are going to happen today? Are we talking 10 years, 20 years, 30 years out? How is it all going to happen? Um, things are happening now. So uh, the examples you gave there, traffic lights certainly happening now. Um, and those traffic lights are connected. They're working intelligently. Then it's easy then if you've got the right platforms in place to add in, making them all turn green when an emergency vehicle, vehicle comes through. Um, some cities have intelligent buses so that they are going on the most on the optimized routes. And of course, we're all using um, things like Google Maps now where we are having our journeys optimized. So so if, they, if, they, if they, they see that all the mobile phones have stopped in a particular area, they know that there's uh, maybe been a traffic accident and will divert you automatically around that. So, so we're already using these in many, many different ways. And I think it is just about that finding all the new use cases that um, as we have that data, how do we use it intelligently? Well, Alison Mitchell, thank you as the executive director for Sensor City. Thank you for spending time with us today. It was a pleasure, Peggy. Thank you very much.
All right. Well, you see the city is becoming more connected and so are all of us. So we'll continue to see so much more happening in the years ahead. We appreciate all your time.